Number 13. The pressure of a sample of gas is measured at sea level with a close-ended manometer. The liquid in the manometer is mercury. Dis uh, determine the pressure of the gas in Tor, Pascal, and Bar. Okay, so we have a close-ended manometer. Close-ended just means that this part is not open to the atmosphere, so there's no addition or uh, there's no addition of the atmospheric pressure that's coming into the gas. So in order to find the pressure of the gas, it's just the height differences that are on the both ends of this manometer. So on the left side, the gas goes up to this end, and on the right side, the gas goes up to this end. The pressure is the difference between this, these two, or basically the height of this, right? So they told us that it was 26.4 centimeters. So we know that we have 26.4 centimeters, and they told us that the manometer was in mercury, which is Hg on the periodic table. So for each one of these, we basically have to just convert the centimeters of mercury into tor, pascal, and bar. Okie dokie. So let's start off with the first one, right? Let's start with what we're given, 26.4, and we want centimeters of mercury. But now if we want to go to tor, right, and here are all the conversions that we should know for our gas chapter, right? Maybe your teacher or professor might give you these conversions, but some of, some of them may want you to memorize them. So a tor is a unit of pressure, and it can be linked with millimeters of mercury. MM means millimeters, but not centimeters. So basically, we just have to convert from centimeters to millimeters. Now, we can go through the whole thing of going from centimeters to meters to millimeters, but we could also just know quickly that for every one centimeter, there's just 10 millimeters. So I could use dimensional analysis to just go from a centimeter to the millimeter. So times by the ratio, we put the unit that we don't want on the bottom. So in this case, centimeters goes on the bottom and we'll do millimeters up top. Now you could write centimeters of mercury, millimeters of mercury, but I just like to keep it as like a distance value. And then we know that for every 10 millimeters, that equals one centimeter and the centimeters cancel. And now I can just hook the, the mercury up with the millimeters to make it all one thing. Maybe I'll do that. I'll bring this 10 down a little bit here. And now we have the millimeters of mercury. So now I can just go to tour. So times by a ratio again, just keep going. Millimeters of mercury on the bottom. Whoop, what's going on? There we go. Millimeters of mercury on the bottom. And we want tor on the top. And now if we go to our conversion, these four are all equal to each other. So just pick the units that you need. 760 tor equals 760 millimeters of mercury. So in essence, they're exactly the same number. So I could say one tor equals one millimeters of mercury. It doesn't matter. So in this case, since I'm just going to, I like to just memorize one set of things. So I'm just going to say for 760 tor, it equals 760 millimeters of mercury, but you don't even have to calculate this because it's the same number. But I just want to show you just the conversion. So millimeters of mercury gets canceled, millimeters of mercury gets canceled, and now we're ending at tor, and we have our first answer. Okay, so all we have to do is just 26.4 times 10. 26.4 times 10 is 264. That looks good to me. 264 tor, and that's our first answer. Oop. There we go. Okie dokie. All right, so letter A is done. Now, let's move on to letter B. Pascal. Well, I do see a relationship between Pascal and millimeters of mercury. So I would basically, if I take the same initial number, and I like to do that so that I don't have any rounding issues, I would still have to go to millimeters of mercury. So I would still have to do this step. So I can basically get rid of this, right? And I can just mix with my ending result, right? I don't want to go to tor anymore. I want to go to millimeters of mercury. So 
times by the ratio. Millimeters of mercury goes on the bottom. And the Pascal goes up on the top. And since, remember, they're all equal to each other, I'm just going to take the two that I need. 760 millimeters of mercury equals 101,325 Pascal. So 101,325 goes on the top, and 760 goes on the bottom. Cancel out the millimeters of mercury, and now I have just Pascal. So I'm ready to just calculate. 26.4 times 10 times 101,325, and then divided by 760. Uh, three sig figs, because that's what we started with. Remember, uh, conversion factors have nothing to do with significant figures. It's always the number that you started with. So this would be 3.52 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's 3.52 times 10 to the 4th Pascal. And the second one is done. Okay, so let's see. Maybe we could add on to what we just did to get to the next one, but we'll see. So the next one is bar. Let's see, I'm going to search the four, the major four, and there's no bar here. Here it is. One bar equals 100,000 pascals. So look where we're at. Oh, we, we just solved for pascal. So I can just continue on here and just convert from pascal to bar. So let's do it. Times by the ratio. I don't want Pascal anymore, so I'll get rid of that. I'm going to put PA on the bottom, and I'm going to put bar on the top. Well, one bar, so one goes on the top, equals 100,000 Pascals. So 100,000 goes on the bottom. Pascal cancels out, and now you just do this whole thing again. So starting from left to right, it would be 26.4 times 10 times 101.325 divided by 760, and then divided by 100,000. And there's 100,000. Three sig figs, so you get 0 0.352, and that's bar. And that's the answer to the final one. So there you go, guys. Hopefully this helped, and maybe if I just put it up here, this would be 0 0.352 bar. And we are done. Just know that all four of these, 26.4 centimeters of mercury is the same thing as 264 tor, which is the same thing as this in Pascal and the same thing as bar. It's just different units for pressure, but they all are equivalent, okay? I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe if you want to help us out. I really do appreciate you guys and you know, good luck on all your future tests, okay? I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.